excited to teach this game to the kids today. Um, what are we playing? Well, isn't it obvious? There's three different types of sports and music written in. What are we playing? Uh, we're just taking all the things and then just making it into one play. Uh, I don't think that will work. Sure, well, just grab the equipment. Yeah. But how, how am I supposed to play? What are the rules? Which, which team am I on? There is no rules, so just grab the equipment and just play how the game should go. Okay, I guess. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Well, I know you're not playing it right. See, this is important. I'm not going to play it. Knowing and following the rules are part of what makes it fun. If no one knows the rules, or if everyone has their own rules, it's hard to play and nobody has a good time. Rules help everyone play the game and enjoy it. Life has all sorts of rules. Some rules are important because they make life better for everyone. But who makes these rules? Why do we need them anyway? Listen closely to find out. God's way is best. The Israelites traveled for about seven weeks. God was leading them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God brought them to Mount Sinai because he has something very special for them. God called Moses to go up the mountain and reminded him of the covenant, which means promise, he had made with his people. God freed them from slavery when they could not save themselves. God was telling Moses how the people should live because of what God had done. They should get to know God, who loved them and saved them. Moses told the people, and they replied, We will do everything the Lord has said. Then God spoke to Moses so everyone could hear what he had to say. The Bible says the mountain was covered in a thick cloud with thunder, lightning, and loud trumpet blasts. It must have been an amazing sight. However, the people were terrified because they saw the power and holiness of God. God's holiness means he is pure and set apart from anything that is evil or wicked. That is why we are separated from God when we sin. God spoke from the mountain and reminded the people that he is the one true living God and that he had brought them out of Egypt. Then he gave them what we now call the Ten Commandments. God wanted his people to know him and trust him enough to believe his way is best and obey it. Remember, God's way is best. Commandments are rules or laws that should be obeyed. You might think having rules take all the fun out of life, but remember what happened in the beginning of this video? Games aren't fun if there are no rules or if everyone plays by a different set of rules. God even has rules or laws for how the earth and the universe work. Because of law of gravity, when you throw something in the air, it will come down. The world works because of this law and others um, God's, God has given. God made laws about the earth, but he also made laws about life. These laws show how life works best. Because God made the world, he knows the best way to live. Because God is good, his, uh, and all his rules are also good. God's commandments are actually a way of seeing what God is like. He shows us things about himself um, through his commandments. God wanted his people to know him, love him, and live for him. So what are these commandments? Let's look at the first four, which are all about how your life with God sh um, should work. They are about loving God with all your heart, your soul, mind, and strength. Loving Him with everything you are. The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me. It means, put God first. Because God is so wonderful and amazing, He should be first in your life. This commandment is saying you should love God so much that everything you do shows how much you love Him. God being first means you love Him more than your family, friends, pets, or even hobbies. The wonderful thing is that when you love God first, you can love everyone else even better than before. The second commandment is you shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. It means worship God as the one true God. Without looking at what the Bible says, it can be easy to say, well, I think God is like this or like that, instead of seeing what God actually says about himself. 
He is telling people to worship him alone and nothing else. Not statues or the sun or the moon or even people or things. He is the one true and living God who is worthy of his worship. He is bigger and greater than any false gods. The third commandment is, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. God's name is special. He wants you and me to love and honor him by not using his name in wrong ways. Sometimes when people are surprised or shocked or hurt or sad, they will say God's name or even Jesus' name, but they're not talking about the one true God. They're using um, his name in a way that does not show love or respect for that. If love for God is in your heart, it will come out in your words. Remember, God's name is special. The fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. A Sabbath is a day of rest. Have a day of rest. It is a time set apart to be different than the rest of the days of the week. People usually think of Sunday as a day of rest because we go to church and worship God on that day. But you can rest in who God is by thinking about God's word and the things God has done in the past week, spending time with people who love Jesus and enjoying God's creations. So these first four commandments help you to know God, love Him, and live your life His way. Let's review. Put God first. Worship God as the one true God. God's name is special. And have a day of rest. Next week, we will learn the commandments 5 through 10.